whatever the problem is, and climate change is just one of many problems that human beings are facing right now, is best mitigated by a more powerful civilization. And power takes wealth. And more wealth means more growth of the economies of the world. We need to grow. And it's not enough that we grow or even that we grow big. The rate of growth matters. Each choice we make now that slows growth is another child who spends one day longer living in poverty and is therefore unable to take advantage of the opportunities offered by modernity. It is the child and the middle class who cannot quite afford to buy the best computer, so they settle for something lesser and cannot quite run the simulation they wanted to at the rate they wanted to, so they get bored. They might have been on the cusp of some great new discovery. It is the company who might have developed the next best smartphone beyond anything we've encountered before, but the price point would have been set too high because the raw materials were too expensive to extract now that coal is taxed so heavily and almost legislated out of existence in some places. And as I hint at, almost all of this analysis at times assumes a priori that climate change is a bad thing. But is the climate of the planet Earth now actually optimal for people? Might it not be better if Southern Africa or the Middle East had more rain or if the centre of Australia was better watered? What if some parts of Asia had a little less rain and was less prone to the regular floods we see in China and Japan and so on every single year? And as for South Pacific nations threatened with going underwater from rising sea levels, the data on this is quite weak if you look into the details. The sea levels might rise, but they won't rise everywhere equally. The strength of gravity on the Earth pulls ocean water here and there by different amounts. There's some geophysics 101 for you. But say they were threatened, just as they are threatened by regular tsunamis, even absent rising sea levels. Well, anyone on the coast should be building seawalls and building higher structures. The Dutch have literally been doing this for centuries. It's not like this sort of technology requires revolutionary thinking. It's known engineering, albeit on a larger scale. We can mitigate. In short, we can solve problems rather than trying to avoid them. In any case, climate change is happening and will happen whether we cause it or do anything about it. We can treat the problem as an opportunity not to impoverish ourselves and try to have a smaller impact, but by doubling down on using cheap energy to enrich ourselves rather than impoverish everyone. We are people, the most powerful entities in the known universe. Physical reality hasn't seen the likes of us before and what we are capable of. This is just the start. We should be taking charge. If we are fortunate enough to be living on top of oil and coal fields and uranium deposits, just maybe that's no accident. Maybe it's providence. I'm not religious, but it is a clue that not only does the universe seem fine-tuned for life, but perhaps the very earth itself is fine-tuned for the flourishing of human beings. Here you go, the planet is almost crying out, all the energy, cheap as you like, for as long as you like, until you fly free even of the shackles of this planet and these forms of energy. Have at it. Energy-dense fossil fuels. Burn them up until you've got fusion power or who knows what else. But until those are effectively exhausted and you are a genuine interplanetary species, don't worry about changing the atmosphere and climate in minor ways. You, after all, are children of the cosmos. You will live among the stars, but not with a net zero attitude. That's the attitude that says, this is all we've got and all we're going to ever have. We're better than this. Let's fire up, figuratively and literally. Fire the blast furnaces and reactors. And yes, even the coal-fired power stations. Get them moving. Reduce financial costs everywhere so we have the money to move mountains and hold back the sea with walls bigger than we've ever built before and lift the world to a standard of living and wealth we have not actually striven for before. Offer opportunity to people trapped in poverty because they cannot afford to pay their bills. Offer them the chance to save, accumulate wealth, claw back some time from jobs they don't much like and be creative the rest of the time that they have. Let individuals create solutions for their lives and maybe for the world. Maybe then we'll have genuine alternatives. The fusion power we all keep hoping for, that thing which might be able to power the carbon capture devices to reverse the impact of the fossil fuels we did use for a couple of centuries to get ourselves to the place where we had the technology and knowledge of how to reverse the very impact of those things, if that's what we want. 
It's like Wittgenstein's ladder all over again. Once you've used it to climb out of the well of being a barely industrial society, you toss it away and then choose to use fusion power to suck the carbon back out of the atmosphere. Or maybe you don't. Maybe the science of tomorrow tells you that just a little more carbon dioxide is better for agriculture and old growth forests. Maybe the dinosaurs, not the actual ones, the metaphorical climate science dinosaurs, had ideas about trying to maintain stasis, as if the climate of 1800 was the ideal one for humans and the rest of the planet for some reason. Maybe we'll learn better. Maybe we'll be able to learn literally to control the climate and increase or decrease carbon dioxide, rainfall or wind to the point where we can truly realise the age-old dream of controlling the weather locally so crops are always watered and days at the beach never ruined by clouds or storms. Who knows what we will become capable of? But to get there... We need more knowledge and technology, but to generate those at the fastest rate possible by as many creative people as possible, but I repeat myself, we need more wealth. And that means not squandering it on projects today that cost billions transitioning from cheap, abundant coal and oil to hard to manufacture, low energy density, solar and wind farms with short lifetimes and all sorts of additional logistical difficulties. And let's stop simply gifting money to poor nations for shady climate change mitigation projects where no taxpayer actually knows where the money is going or for what purpose. Let's leave money in the pockets of the productive who can make more of it. Maybe they'll make a fusion reactor, who can know? But we may not find out for decades or centuries. Hence, if children around the world, including in Western nations, are raised in communities where half of one's income goes towards a housing loan or the rent, and the other half is for high energy costs, requiring some kind of welfare just to feed the family. By the way, this is the future that socialists want. They want a future where everyone is dependent on the government. And although people tend not to vote for such things, the governments of the world will implement such policies by stealth, even in defiance of the majority of voters, especially when the elites in the form of both sides of the parliament agree that this is what's good for them. Those citizens, the politicians paternalistically judge, do not understand the end is nigh due to climate change. The academics and experts have informed us. We, the politicians, we have the inside word. It's our duty to push for net zero. The world has decided. The World Economic Forum has decided. The UN has decided. Unelected bureaucrats and eurocrats have decided. Who are we, one nation among many, to go against the tide? The argument is over. Fossil fuels are over. Renewables that need to be replaced and, re and are unreliable, they are the only way forward. Buy shares now in your local wind or solar farm. Buy your solar panels. There's a government subsidy. Business, invest in green and get a tax break. Schools, teach one side of the argument to be accredited. We are at a turning point, or at least we're at a point of inflection. We can continue to see inflation rise and the cost of energy skyrocket as we refuse to use the cheap and near ubiquitous, near the surface of the earth, gifts of the earth to better ourselves.